All right, so if you aren't aware, could I just quickly check who's used, well, actually, who hasn't used Binance before? Awesome, great, great. So Binance is, if not the, the largest exchange in the world, and like Cameron just alluded to, it's a crypto-only exchange. So because it's based initially out of China and now it's a, a remote kind of service which is now based out of Malta uh, because they are crypto-friendly, um, essentially they don't have the service for you to send your, your sovereign-issued fiat currency like your Australian dollar into, which therefore you have to go through services like CoinSpot, like Digital Surge, take your Australian dollar, buy some Bitcoin, Ethereum or otherwise, and then send it across to an exchange like Binance. Now Binance, um, you know, they have gone through quite a lot. During the Christmas period last year, they were picking up nearly a million users a day. Um, extreme numbers of people that were flocking to the ex exchange. And I guess what they have over other exchanges is their fees at the time were extremely low. So we're talking 0.1%. So when you're doing large scale transactions, that was uh, you know, a lot more appealing to a lot of people. So the, the website is simply Binance.com and, and something we should all be aware of now, I don't know how easy that is to see, but up in the top left hand corner here, always make sure it's secure. Make sure you're at, actually at Binance.com with the dot above the I and not below the I or, or you know, some other foreign language because these phishing sites are trying to take your money and they'll look exactly the same, you'll log in, it'll feel like a great experience but obviously you're not getting your bang for your buck, uh, you're just losing out on everything. So this is what it looks like and what we're going to do just first is, is register an account. Now, the owner of uh, Binance, Chao Zheng Peng, uh, didn't you know, get in touch with me for some reason for this while I went through this, so I didn't get $500 you know, dummy account to utilise, so we're not going to do any transactions because uh, in terms of security, uh, I, I use this exchange, so I don't want to expose you know, what I'm doing on here. Um, but if you click register up in the top right hand corner, now this is where my internet, hopefully my Telstra, my trusty Telstra dongle here is going to play the game. It's as simple as that. You've got an email password, confirm your password, and just like CoinSpot, some form of referral ID. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I didn't have a block conscious at Gmail account. So we're going to create a 10 minute email because it should be enough for us to be able to do this. Paste it in. Testing, one, two, three. So you can grab my password if you want. Like I said, there's nothing on here, so we're safe. And we'll agree to the terms and we're in. Now Binance has this little game they like to play, which is this puzzle game. Now I'm no really good at it. Beautiful. I defeat 99% of users, did you see that? <laughs> now it's going to send me a, an email verification like anything. We'll come back to my, oh, look at that, like clockwork. And I just need to confirm this. So this is the same, obviously, if you use you know, Gmail or anything, you'll log in, you'll confirm your account. And as a part of this, because it is a crypto only exchange, there is no know your customer process. You don't have to upload a, a sterling picture of yourself with a sign, you know, wearing your fancy outfit uh, to look good for the photo. It is literally, you sign up, you can verify yourself, but the only reason you would do so is if you're trying to transact large sums of money. So the first initial level is two Bitcoin you can withdraw per day. If you want to withdraw more than that per day, you have to verify yourself and that will allow you to tr transact or pull out up to 100 Bitcoin a day. And if you're doing that, good for you. Um, it's, a, it's a large sum of money. All right, so let's get into this one. I'll get rid of this. We don't want too many extra doovy wackies. Testing, one, two, three. We get to play the game again. Da, da, da. Oof, I dropped a percent. All right, this is something that's new to me in terms of uh, safety risk. You didn't have this when I signed up. Uh, like I said, please make sure you, you've got the right Binance because uh, this secure icon, I'm not sure you're aware, uh, Google Chrome's actually going to be phasing that out. They'll get rid of the secure and then the lock and then the lock's going to go and then it's just going to be the URL left. So you need to have some wits about you as a part of this process. And it says here, don't install anything else other than Netcraft anti-phishing, which is this little fella up here. Uh, and you kind of just go through, tick these boxes, happy days. I don't need to go too much into this. This mouse isn't participating well on this surface. Give me two seconds. Once again, like we've heard uh, umpteen thousand times today, two-factor authentication is extremely important. Uh, one thing I personally use is not Google Authenticator, but Authy. Uh, Authy is 
very much similar, but it allows you to carry it across multiple devices without losing access. So if you have Google Authenticator on your phone, you lose your phone, and you haven't written down the private key for, uh, sorry, the, the, the key phrase that they give you for that, you'll have to actually email the exchange and say, can you please turn this off for me, and then re-enable it. Whereas Authy allows you to just log in with the username and password, and it will sync up all the accounts that you have. So I've got about 10 or so that I use across the board. Uh, it's open source as well, so you can trust in the process that people are scrutinizing what they do. I'm going to skip that for now. Uh, this is what I was talking about before. So you can submit verification documents, and if you're going higher than that, like uh, you probably are on the phone to them, like you know them on a personal level. It's serious sums of money you're talking there. Um, there are some other security features that this has in terms of withdrawal address management. So if you turn that on, essentially if you have one preferred, like uh, the ledger or treasure wallet, treasure, treasure wallet that you send back to all the time, you can put that address in uh, and it will only allow you to withdraw to that address. So if you're confident that you own that address and no one else has got those keys, happy days, no one else is gonna be able to withdraw funds. And of course here, here we are in Brisbane, if you see something there that's China or otherwise, you probably wanna log, click that, log them out, change your password, consider moving your funds, um, you possibly have been compromised, or you might be using a VPN and it's directing you to that country, so just be aware of that. If you've signed yourself up to use something like Nord here, I can sign in uh, and you know pretend I'm in Singapore, etc. cetera. Um, other than that, we're gonna go straight into the exchange here to talk about what they look like. So they have two different ones, basic and advanced. Really, it's a color scheme difference, but the, the, the advanced one is a little bit nicer because it puts all the buyers and sellers to one side. So I'm getting 10 minutes, so we're going to hurry this up. All right. On the left-hand side, we have your sells. You have your buyers. On the right-hand side, you have your ability to search for your coins. So up the top here, they sell it in a number of markets. So for example, if you've transferred in Bitcoin, you can only trade against the Bitcoin markets because you have no Ethereum there, which is the ETH here to trade against, or BNB, which is Binance's own coin. It's, it's within the top 20 coins in the world at the moment, uh, and USDT, which is Tether, which we talked about earlier. This here is a trade history. It's pretty simple, right? So this, this coin currently, which we're looking at, is Bitcoin against USDT is, is getting more buy orders than sell, and that's now changed. In the middle here, it's a simple chart. Now, we are going to talk about trading strategies and everything over the weekend, so I'm not going to get into the detail with that for you here. But you have the ability to change the time frame of what you're looking at in terms of the, the candles and also the indicators or oscillators down the bottom. So you've got volume, you've got your MACD, so you're moving averages, convergence, divergence there. All higgledy-piggledy words that if you're not trading already mean nothing to you. So please don't you know, see charts and get confused. It's not something, it's, this is very much a learning journey. It's not something you're gonna pick up overnight. Down the bottom is, is the important stuff. So if you're buying, you have three different types of orders here that you can do. So the first one's the easiest one. If you look at market price, essentially if you're trying to buy it, it's going to get you the best rate at what somebody is selling at at that time. So in this circumstance here, right now it's 6419. That's the best rate I'm going to get. If I hit sell, it will sell it against, it will, sorry, buy it against whatever the, the, the lower sell is there. The opposite of that is obviously if you're trying to sell some Bitcoin, it's against whatever the highest buy order is here at the point in time. If we then go to a slightly more complex order, my mouse is playing games with me, you have a limit order. And essentially, a limit order allows you to set, you know, what value that you're wanting to buy or sell that at. So if I'm wanting to buy this, you know, when it drops down to $6,000 for whatever amount of um, Bitcoin I may have, it will then work out what the total value of USDT is that I need that to buy. You click buy and that order will simply sit there waiting for it to be fulfilled. So if one day the price drops down to 6,000, which is very possible, then it will fulfill that order. Obviously, the alternative side of that is sell, same thing. If you, you know, are confident and you, you just want to set it, you bought it one day and one day you go, you know what, if I can make 20 grand off this like December, I'll sell it, you know, for $20,000, set that order, it will sit there waiting to be fulfilled. The final one is stop limit. Now, it's a little bit more complex limit order and essentially what it does is it 
you say a stop price, and at that stop price, if it's reached, what it will do is then trigger the limit order. So on a buy, if you're wanting to say, you know, I want to buy, you know, maybe in the range of, of 6,000 to 5,500, you could put the stop order at 6,000 and the limit order to actually buy at 5,500. So what you're doing there is, is only executing trades that you actually want to make. So if it gets into that range and you're happy with that range and that price you want to pay, it will execute that to the best of its ability at whatever that price is. So what something to notice over here is that there might not be somebody selling at that rate. So if, uh, for example, you're wanting to sell two Bitcoin and somebody's only selling one Bitcoin at 5,500, it's only going to fulfill that one Bitcoin. It's not going to sell the whole amount. So keep that in mind. You might see that you know, half your order's fulfilled and half the order's not. So that's really the exchange. I'm just going to go quickly to the advanced exchange because I think it looks a little bit nicer. Dun, dun, come on. Cheeky. Dun, 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 dun. So it gives you a bit more of that trading view of what you're looking at. You know, this is more for people, obviously, that are into to that trading aspect. And what we're seeing here is a one-day candles of... Uh, what coin are we on? Bitcoin again. So if you had one that you wanted to pick, you know, we can have a look at uh, everybody's favourite Ripple or the banker's coin, if some people know it as. You can see here that the volume, you know, is fairly, you know, static in terms of not going up and down. There hasn't been too many bumps. But what this also allows you to do is to see between these two prices, if there is a difference between the buy and the sell, that's known as the, the spread in that price there, which can be also shown here in that market depth. So what we're seeing is that if we zoom right in, right now, you know, the difference is that there, there's, you know, a couple of people trying to buy and a couple of people trying to sell at that price, but they're not, you know, converging on each other. So you might have to wait some time for someone to either change their price or what they want to sell at or, or change the price of what they want to buy at to obviously fulfill that order. Another great feature of uh, Binance is that they have integration with what's called TradingView and TradingView is, is you know, more so a, pro a professional platform where you can trade anything from, from you know, stocks to, to, to whatever might you know, tickle your fancy. And TradingView here, if you have a look at it, it's going to load up these charts. They allow you to do a whole heap more, draw funny lines, Fibonacci retracements, all these wonderful things, like I said, that we won't talk about now, but are available to you once you get into that market, which is what you see on the left-hand side here. Other than that, you've got your order history down the bottom, and what also Binance offers is apps for your mobile phone, which are awesome. They also offer apps for iOS or for your, for your Apples and for your, your Windows. So if you want to have a look at that here, it's an app like this, simple. It just comes on your desktop. I'll just click Guest because I don't want to have to log in with my super secret password and email address there. Here you've got your market and what's going on and once again you can click exchange and have a look here. It's exactly the same thing as what you're seeing online um, but you might prefer this because something you might use is to look at four charts at one time on different time frames. So a 30 minute, a one hour, you know, a four hour, eight hour. If you're into that stuff, normally you have like six screens above you and you're just like, wow, this is awesome, uh, which is not something that I, uh, I do. That there essentially is, is Binance. So like I said, it is something where you need to buy uh, something from uh, Digital Surge or from Coinspot. Make sure you go pick up your $10 worth of NEM, $10 worth of Kenya tokens and, and play around. This is you know, what they would consider a big boys exchange, but they are awesome in terms of support. They have, you know, more coins than really anybody, and this exchange is super solid in terms of, uh, you know, people say that it's been hacked or not. It's not the case. This, this exchange has stood the test of time, literally being 12 months old, and gone from nothing to top two exchange. And they are a serious business when it comes to crypto trading in the market. So I've got two minutes left. Is there any quick questions? Yeah, mate, go for it. There's only two minutes, mate. Okay, cool. Ah. Ah. Is there any push notifications on the mobile app so you know your trade's done and then you can set up your next trade? I haven't actually checked it because I've never, I'm not logged in at the moment. so. I haven't checked. I'll find out for you, mate. I'll, yeah. I'll come to you afterwards.
Better than, yeah. Otherwise, you know, you can use a bot, but like that's, that'd be That's right. Good. Yeah. All right. Also, I quite like it with BNB that you get half your fees as well. Like if you yeah, use twenty five percent, I think it's at the moment. They change yeah. their structure, but that's true. If you use Binance's native token, uh, you get a discount on the actual fees that you're paying. So instead of the zero point one, uh, you're getting you know zero point zero seven five or something like that at the moment. Any others? Ripper, that's what we like to see. Either it's, you know this guy sucks, or you know we're content, I guess. Okay, great. Well, look, please, everyone, can we put our hands together for um, Benjamin Hall?